Hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to another exciting YouTube video on this YouTube channel here today. Now, I don't know about you, but every time I have to design some kind of login page or some kind of registration form, I just wanna kill myself because every time I have to deal with a UI text field, a UI text view, uh, what happens when the keyboard comes up? Does it block anything on the screen? Do I have to deal with a scroll view, scrolling everything up and down? I just want to kill myself because uh, doing this is a lot of suffering and I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. So in today's video, I would like to present a solution that can handle all of this stuff relatively easy. And it's part of the LBTA tools library called LBTA form controller. Now, before I dive into any code, I would like to just demonstrate how this stuff is going to work in a couple of different applications on the left side of the screen right here. So the difference between these two screens is that this form on the left is actually top aligned at the very top of the notch here. And then on this guy on the middle simulator, you can see that everything is middle aligned right here in the center of the screen. You'll see that this portion is equivalent to the spacing down below. Now on the left side, let me just show you what happens when I click on a very annoying UI text field. You'll see the keyboard comes up just like that. And if you want to dismiss the keyboard, you can just scroll down and the keyboard will just go away uh, using the keyboard dismiss mode of interactive. Now, everything works perfectly fine. You can scroll this up and you'll see that the element that's at the very bottom of our kind of form here, these three buttons, they align right above the keyboard. And as you click on this guy and this guy, you can just scroll up and everything just works out perfectly or close to perfect as I can do it. Now, every time I'm writing an iOS application, I find that in addition to having a top aligned form, I also need something centered. So this guy is also presenting the very same fields on the left side of the screen. And if I click on this right here, you'll see that this centered form is going to scroll all the way up right here and present these bottom elements, just like what we had in the left side. And if you click on this guy, this guy, all this stuff is going to work out just very nicely having these elements still showing inside of your scroll view right here. If you want to dismiss everything again, you would just drag this guy all the way down and dismiss the keyboard just like so. Now the advantage of using this little toolkit called LBTA form controller is that all we gotta do to make everything work is to allow these elements to be inserted into the internal UI stack view. So basically there is a stack view here and I'm just stacking everything vertically. So this guy, this guy, and all the way down to the very bottom here, these three buttons right here, they're all just being stacked inside of my UI stack view. Now, having seen all of this, you might be wondering now, how exactly do I integrate this library inside of my iOS application, right? Well, let me show you exactly how to install LBTA tools and get our project up and running right now. Okay, boys and girls, welcome to the coding session for today's lesson. The way that I would like to start off today is to quickly go over what the heck is on the screen right now. On the left side of the screen, we have a brand new single view application created. If we run this bad boy inside the simulator, you'll see we are setting the background color to this white. So not doing a whole lot. If you want a gray color, you can pull up the color literal. This guy is very handy and I use it all the time. We can click on that, get the nice little gray color to appear in this square little block. So running this again now, you get a darker gray color instead of the white. Okay, so pretty good start, and this is just a brand new project. I already have the pods installed for LBTA tools. If you don't know how to install it, let me show you how to do it really quickly right now by going into the good old terminal. And let me just clear this so that it's not that scary. Uh, basically, I am inside of the folder for my project. That's the path, and these are the files. So if you don't see your pod file, just make sure to, you know, type in the good old pod init. That will help you create your pod file. I've already done it, so that's why I'm getting this red error. But you just want to make sure you edit your pod file to include the LBTA tools just like that. You can use an, a text editor to edit this file if you want to. But basically, once you have your pod configuration set up, you can either run pod install. So this should work. You'll see that I am using LBTA tools 1.03. If you don't have this little guy showing up, you have to run a pod, a pod update, just so that you can download the necessary pod specs to install this guy properly. 
But once everything is set up correctly, you'll have this XC workspace file that you want to open up instead of this proj one. So just make sure to type in open and just type in XC workspace, so workspace. And there you go, once you enter, you'll get this guy to open up and your pods should hopefully show up just like this. So you'll see all the files related to LBTA tools showing up like that. Okay, so that's how you get started with LBTA tools. To confirm that everything is working, make sure you can import the tools like that. I'm going to run this inside of the X, uh, XS simulator on the left side and hopefully nothing's going to crash and everything looks good. Now, the question is how exactly are we going to modify our application to look like this on the right side? So basically this guy has a lot of different types of UI elements on this form area. So image view, a couple of text fields, a couple of buttons right here, and also these three buttons down here. So let me go through this one step at a time and hopefully I can drag this down. So what exactly do I need to kind of add inside of my form here to make it show up with these text fields? Well, it's actually pretty easy. And all you have to do is make sure that your view controller right here, instead of subclassing the blank UI view controller, I'm going to subclass the form controller. Now this guy has a property on it called the form container stack view. Uh, you can see that it's just a, a plain old stack view that you can add views onto. So basically we are going to call add arrange sub view. Now this guy, let's just say text field equals UI text field. And let's just create it like that. Maybe create it with a background color of white and tf.placeholder equals uh, enter text or you know whatever you want. And I'm simply going to add this into the form container stack view. And you're gonna see something show up at the very top here. So it says enter text. Basically it's this text field here. So to make this a little bit easier to demonstrate what the heck is going on, let me iterate using a loop, so zero dot dot dot, and let's say 15. I'm gonna use a iteration of 15 times. I don't really care about the actual integer. And inside of here, I'm going to create these text fields. So let me just cut that. Every time I create one, I want to add it into the container. So paste here, control I to get the spacing correct. I will now try to run this and hopefully things will appear as I want them to. So you'll see that by default, the form container stack view is horizontal. That's just a default of the stack view. So to make these uh, enter text, text fields show up vertically, we want to say form container stack view. And what is it called? Axis right here, so vertical. Now, every time I forget these properties, I do have to look them up. So either go through the docs or you know do a good old stack overflow search. So that is looking pretty nice instead of having these very thin UI text fields. So you see it's showing up very thin, right? I want to make them a lot taller, so tf.constrain height. And let's just give it a height of 50. We can also add some spacing to this form container stack view, so spacing. And let's say 12, like that, I'll run again. Uh, this constraint height comes from LBTA tool, so make sure you have this imported. And once you do this, you'll see that all of your views right here are now spanning vertically. So let's just test out what happens when I pull up the keyboard by clicking on this text field. You can click on any one of these guys and you know start typing. And as I scroll all the way down to the very bottom, you'll see that we have the enter text appearing right there, right above the keyboard. Now I defaulted the actual keyboard to have some padding right between the very last element and the top of the keyboard here. So that's kind of why you're seeing this spacing. And so that is looking pretty nice if I have to say so myself. Uh, something else that you can do with your form container stack view, because it's just a regular stack view, is you can specify the layout margin. So let me just show you what this will do. Uh, let's say top is zero, uh, 24, zero, 24. So to make it look a little bit nicer, you can configure the stack view however you want really. And once you do that, the left and the right will have a spacing padding of the value of 24, obviously. Uh, if you take a look at the finished version of the app right here, you'll see that the email is indented to the right by a couple of pixels. 
So if you want to make this easier, you can use something called the indented text field. It also comes from the tools library and you can use maybe this guy. Let's see which one do I want. Let's use the placeholder one and I'll just say enter uh, form field. The padding is going to control the spacing on the left side and this corner radius, you can also give it some roundedness. Uh, this guy keyboard type, you don't care about this. You can just remove that, use white and is secure text entry. I don't care about that either. So let me just remove this bottom one and run it right now. You'll see that the left of our text field is gonna have some nice spacing just like that. So, you know, make sure to use the available uh, UI kit extensions if you can, such as indented text field. Okay, so that's basically how the form is created and how it looks like whenever the keyboard pops up like so. Looks pretty clean and as you can see, it's really easy to actually add things inside of your form without you having to configure what exactly happens to your scroll view and the keyboard. So if you want to make it look more like this, obviously you have to create the elements yourself. So for example, if I want to create the sign up and cancel button, uh, you can create them either inside of here or just create them up here. So let's say let's sign up button equals something, right? So I don't want to waste all of your time. So I'm going to take it from my other source code file, which is right over here. I'm just going to copy this. Let me just copy all of this code, paste this bad boy in here. And I think I should be okay. You can ignore this cancel for now. This just creates the sign up button and also the cancel button. I am now going to go down here. So right after the iteration of the 15, I can just remove this and let's pop this guy down to something like four. That makes a little more sense. And I'm going to say form container stack view, add a range sub view. And let's now add our sign up button, form container stack view, and arrange sub view, and then our cancel button now. So hopefully this is going to work out correctly. I think we're going to have four text fields right here. So this is actually doing five iterations. Let me push that down to three. And we have our sign up and cancel button. So looking pretty good. Uh, the sign up button, so sign up button dot constraint height. I'm going to give this 50 as well just to make sure the consistency is correct for all of my UI elements. I'm going to run that again and hopefully the buttons will appear taller and looks a lot better. So that looks pretty good. And uh, let's kind of test one more thing by adding this image at the very top. So let's see assets. What do I have in here? Not looking good. So let me just drag in some assets. I'm going to drag this guy in here. So this is the logo at the very top. So that is a pretty good way to import an image and to kind of put that image at the very top here, you can just create an image view. So let's say image view equals UI image view. This guy comes with this content mode one, which is what I actually want to use image literal or just do this right here and drag in this guy. Hopefully that will work. Double click. That looks good. It's showing up. This content mode is I'm going to use scale aspect fit. Okay, so hopefully that's going to give me the desired effect uh, form container stack view. I'm going to add this at the very top here. So image view, and I'm gonna try to run this again. Doesn't exactly matter where these guys go. So I'm just gonna paste it up here and that looks pretty good. The image view is all the way up here. Now you can modify these guys to be whatever you want. So let's say I want to modify the height of this guy to be something like uh, 64. Uh, I think that looks okay. So I just wanted to make sure that it's a lot smaller like this right here. So that's 64 and you know, is looking quite close to what I have on the right side. Now the moment of truth is whenever I click on this guy, I would hope to be able to scroll this up just a little bit. And as you can see, if I scroll this up right here, then it snaps directly at the bottom of the cancel button right there. So click on this, this, it's kind of snapping right here. You can scroll this down. Uh, this might make a little more sense if I bump up these text fields. So I'm gonna constrain the height to 60 instead of 50 for the four text fields from zero to three. And if I click on these guys, it'll hide that button a little bit more. I can drag that up. It snaps onto the cancel button like so. 
Uh, if you want to add some extra padding to the cancel and the keyboard, I believe you can add the bottom right here. So let's say 16 for the bottom layout margins of our form container stack view. And I'll try to enter some text inside of here and you'll see that the 16 is showing up somewhere right here. I'm not sure if it's exactly 16, but that's what it kind of looks like for now at least. All right, so now that we have our form rendering out pretty nicely inside of our simulator here, uh, what I would like to show you how to do now is to center everything inside of this entire screen. So for example, I want this somewhere down here and I want this guy pushed down a little bit. And you might be asking, how exactly do I center this entire thing, right? Well, with the LBTA form controller, it's actually really easy to do this. And uh, you just wanna declare your view controller with an alignment property. So it's not showing up in the autocomplete. So I'll show you how to do this by going back inside of the app delegate. You'll see that our window root view controller is this actual controller here. So what I'll do is I'll say view controller and alignment will show up in this screen. Uh, you'll see that you have to fill out using some kind of form alignment and there's only two options that you can pick from. It defaults as the top, so I'm going to use the center now instead. I can now run the code. You'll see everything is just going to nicely center itself inside of the screen. Looks pretty good. I can click on that and drag it up. You'll see the spacing is a little larger than before. I'm not exactly sure why yet, but that's the ease of use for this view controller component. Just specify an alignment and everything is centered correctly. Now I'm going to go back into the actual form itself and let's just modify this to be from zero to one. I'm going to remove, I guess, two of the text fields using that modification and everything is still being centered like so. And let's just see, click on that, A, B, C, D. Looks good, I can drag this down and dismiss it just like that. Very easy and very straightforward to operate this component. Uh, if you want to add in these buttons right here, you can just use a horizontal stack view. And let's see, what do I want to do? Do I wanna show you how to do that? <laughs> let's kind of go over this exercise here. I am going to copy a couple of buttons from my other application just to make this a little easier and quicker to follow along. So here is my Facebook button, my Twitter button, and my LinkedIn button on the right side. Now I'm going to go down here. So we have our sign up and cancel button, which is these guys right there. I am going to go down below and let's use a, let's see, let buttons uh, stack view equals UI stack view. I'm going to use a range sub view of the, let's just swap these orders around. So GitHub button is that our LinkedIn button. So that's actually the GitHub icon. I think I'm calling this incorrect. So let's just say command control E and GitHub button, rename that bad boy. And let's say uh, Facebook button. So button, what are these guys called? Uh, button right, FB button and Twitter button. Hopefully that comes up correctly. So those are the three buttons that I need. And I'm going to say button stack view dot, uh, let's say, let's see, form container stack view, add arrange sub views of the button stack view like that. I'm gonna to try to run this. I don't think it's going to show up correctly just yet. I do have to make some modifications, but you'll see that once you do that, this guy is very large now. So you probably don't want that is my guess. And the way to fix this is to make sure your buttons uh, stack view dot distribution is dot fill equally. And all three of your buttons will span the same amount of space on the horizontal default axis of your UI stack view. That's why it looks like that. I believe the Twitter, the actual PNG icon is larger. That's why it's showing up with the taller height. Uh, something else that you can do is for these guys, I think I can actually limit the stack view. So constrain height, and let's limit this guy to 50 or something smaller. Let's see what 50 looks like for now. And as you can see, that's what it looks like. Uh, I don't exactly like how they're so wide. So let's just say that for each, uh, let's just say bracket dollar sign zero image view dot content mode equals dot scale aspect fit. So if you don't know, a button has an image on it. And if you set the content mode to aspect fit, it looks like the correct aspect ratio, like so. You can actually click on these guys. That's why they have a little bit of a tint down state. Now, if you look at the actual button declaration, 
it just uses an image with an always original rendering mode. Kind of looks like that. Looks pretty darn nice if I have to say so myself. And now that looks pretty good. Let me go back to App Delegate and modify this to be the top. And by default, it's the top, so you can actually omit this if you wanted to do so. So this guy is now at the top. I think that if you don't have enough space for the actual scroll view, it doesn't allow you to scroll. So, you know, that's the effect of that. You can click to dismiss, I believe. So that's not working exactly. Let me go back to the login form controller. If you want to give your scroll view, so scroll view, uh, let's give this guy the always bounce vertical to true. So basically this entire component has a scroll view that allows you to scroll up and down like that. So it just scrolls up and down. And inside of that scroll view is a vertical stack view that allows you to just stack everything from top to bottom. So now that we have the always bounce vertical on the scroll view, it allows us to kind of bounce it up and down like that. Uh, let's make sure that you can drag this down and dismiss the keyboard. And that's looking pretty solid. Alrighty, everybody, that about concludes it for today's lesson. Uh, hopefully you were able to see how simple and how easy it is to implement this LBTA form controller component. As you can see, we didn't suffer a whole lot and I didn't feel like throwing my laptop out the window. Uh, but before you, you know, start using this application or this component in all of your iOS applications, uh, what you have to know is that there are some limitations to what you can do with the LPTA form controller. And uh, so one big flaw is that it doesn't really support landscape orientation all that well. Uh, you can try a couple of things and get something to work, but uh, that's not something that I would advise doing. And uh, doing landscape is something that I never actually support in my iOS applications. I'd probably throw myself out the window if I had to do that. So having said all that, uh, if you want to download the source code for today's video and everything that you saw, uh, the link is in the description below. And finally, hopefully you enjoy using the LBTA pods. I did put a lot of time and energy in making all the source code work, so make sure that you appreciate my time and effort. That's going to be it for today's video. Keep on coding, guys, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.